was considering maybe it's time for our last invocation. If you can't hear me, just fast forward about 30 seconds. I'm trying to get more line and do my sound check real fast. Mic check one two one two. Come on. Work with me here. Do re mi fa so la ti do. All right, that sounds decent. All right, so welcome to the what should have been the final episode, the major episode. But we will be redoing Assassin and we'll be redoing Sorcerer because I don't like uh, the format that I did those in. I like the format that I've done all the others in. So we're going to redo, you're going to redo those. All right. Also, I'm very aware that most people are going to watch this episode for their pawns, not necessarily for themselves. So I'm going to speak towards the Arisen side, which is what I normally focus on as well as the pawn side at points. And we're gonna start that here and now. We're gonna start with our skills. We can have your pick, any you like. What will it be today? Have your pick come up. Fact, let's just go over here to demo. Alright, so on my right bumper I have the skill skills that I shared with other uh, classes just in case you want to swap to Magic Archer or Mystic Knight these will also show up on those on left bumper I have the ones that are only for Mage so your best bread and butter skill is going to be Holy Boon slash Holy Affinity it gives you a slight bump in magic just like every other affinity but on top of that it gives you uh, lasers now I don't have any uh, well you can still see laser effect so the way I like to use this is um, jump and still hold the button And as you're coming down, you'll be able to release it in midair and then you get one more off. And you could just run around holding the X button at all times or whatever your light attack button is. In order to always be ready. That's going to be your bread and butter. That's going to kill 99% of things. However, anything that is white, meaning dire wolves, snow harpies, and not snow harpies as much actually snow harpies aren't going to really really resist this but dire wolves and um griffins they need to, you need to be wary of those because they resist this all right your next skill is also going to be holy element high spell screen It creates this area around you and it buffs your magic uh, defense and your defense. It's also primo against ghosts. So uh, the Halidom series does more damage and the Anodyne series does less damage, but this hits like this is kind of in between, but it hits more often. All right, and then your last um, unique skill that we're going to go over. No, second to last, actually, because we're going to go over Halidom as well. High Grapnel, it is a dark skill. What it does is it gr grabs an enemy, as you would expect, and it slows them down or paralyzes them, depending on their size. And what it can also do is it can deal a dark critical hit that's based on your base magic. 
in uh, any uh, element that your weapon has at that point in time. All right, so that's the uh, first three skills. Last one I'm going to go over is Halidom here. As far as uh, unique skills go, what will it be today? I don't even know if I've already learned it. Let me see. Yeah, I have. So, <clears throat> High Haladom is kind of your get out of jail free card when it comes to getting torpor. That's kind of the most important thing. Torpor and blindness are the most important two things. So what you could do is, I would actually replace Levin with that. Reason is because Levin isn't really necessary if you're going to be using Holy Focus Boat from your Holy Affinity. So you don't have to use all three basic elements, you can go with High Haladom instead. I do recommend keeping Frigger and Comestion though. And it just creates a healing cloud for you. And it'll heal any debilitation. Well, almost any debilitation. Obviously it doesn't heal petrification. Um State based effects like tarring and drenched, and then um, your stats been downed. Uh oh, is my sound breaking up again? That's no good. My check one, two, one, two. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Okay, we're back. Good. All right. Frigger. This is the biggest disrespect that this game did to mages by not making this deal physical damage. If it did... You would be able to take down golems, but, well, metal golems. Well, well actually, no, this doesn't reach high enough to take down metal golems, but still. You can still jump off of this, probably, right? Nah, not quite high enough. But still, it's good for being enemies that are weak to ice, like uh, Saurians. Combustion. It's the fire attack. Use it to deal fire damage. Angle is also good, but we're going to use commission for a specific reason. If you have an annulled weapon, the first instance of fire damage that you deal is doubled, so you want to be using the highest burst damage that you can. And regular commission has the highest burst damage for a mage. But uh, that's not to say that Angle isn't a good spell in its own. Uh, if you're trying to take down a Wyvern, Angle is a very good spell. So you might want to bring it along with you inside a Bitter Black Island. We can safeguard. Have your pick. Any you like. Um, I think we went over everything for Arisen. Now for your pawn. For the most part, your affinity is just going to be whatever you need. Um, I wouldn't recommend Holy Affinity on a pawn during the Grancis portion of the game. For the first... Unless you're about to fight some ghosts. If you're about to fight some ghosts, then Holy Affinity is, is, is awesome. But... If you're not fighting ghosts, use High Angle for the most part. If you're about to fight... 
if you're in stage five and you're about to go fight some gargoyles or salamet or somebody swap to hi uh i don't have that one hold up what will it be today and this is for your pawn remember this isn't for you this is for a pawn thunderboon is that the only that's the only oh fire i don't have fire either so yeah fire boon for just moving around in grancis Super effective against like 80% of things in Grancis. Thunder Affinity, specifically during stage 5 when you're fighting Salomet, um, the Cockatrice, the Gargoyle. You want to be, you want to have that electric damage on your weapon, so that's why you want that Thunder Affinity instead. And only have one Affinity at a time. Oh, I said this was, <laughs> I was like, how did I not have Fire Affinity? And I just, and yeah, Fire Affinity for most things. Ice Affinity, if you're about to fight some Saurians, then Ice Affinity is going to be great for you. What else is weak to Ice? Oh, if you're about to fight the monster inside of Devil Fire Grove, then Ice Affinity is going to be, you need that on you. Uh, so put that on your mage. Thunder Affinity, I keep saying stage five. Holy Affinity for Ghosts, and then Dark Affinity for when you're actually going to fight the dragon. Make sure that that is attuned to you when you're actually on your pathway to fight the dragon. So that is for your pawn. But for you, you only need Holy Affinity. For your pawn, swap affinities as necessary because your pawn is not smart. Like your pawn's kind of smart, but the bestiary isn't perfect, and sometimes they'll give you a bad affinity and then they won't update. Um, as for other spells, it really just comes down to what you need. Grapno is a great support spell because it'll slow down enemies. Spell screen is great. It's a buff. So if you have a pawn and you want some more defense, like you're about to go fight the infamous bandits on top of that hill in Vestad Hills, then yeah, spell screen. If your pawn puts it on you, that's great. Comestion is also great. Don't, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not upgrade Comestion, by the way. So don't go to the end, don't go to the end or whoever and get high commission on your pawn. That's just fair warning. Don't do it because your the the pawn does not know to short cast a spell. So they'll always use the strongest version of a spell. And in this case, high commission might be the high version of the spell, but it's not the strongest version. So they'll always be casting high commission, when in reality, they you want you know, them casting low commission because low commission is stronger. Anodyne again, keep it at base, uh, not because it's stronger as base anodyne, but because it's much faster to cast. And Two seconds of difference can make a world. It can it can be life or death in early grances. So keep anodyne at base level at all times for your pawn. And by the time you be like, wow, I'm not getting enough healing from this. That's the point where what you would, would want to go to your inventory. Well, your let me explain it. So in Grand Soren, there's Camellia's Apothecary. She sells unlimited numbers of uh, empty flasks. And you can take those empty flasks up here to the healing spring and heal, uh, fill those up with spring waters. Instead of putting anodyne on your pond, once you're strong enough to actually make it to the healing spring, just start filling those empty flasks up with water and your pond will heal you instantaneously. Not just you, but your entire party and themselves instantaneously as long as they have uh, spring waters. We can have your so that's how you go about healing if you want to be good at it. If you want to use Anodyne, that's fine, but I highly recommend against it. Once you get to a certain point in the game, you should not be using Anodyne anymore on your pawn.
and upgrading it to high or granting it to nine does not make it better. Uh, granting it to nine has a second effect of like letting you heal past the gray health, so that's kind of cool. But at the same time, you could just use your healing orders. So just use the spring orders for that, honestly. Uh, anything else that we care about with pawns? Not really. Um, don't use Brontide. Pawns are really bad with Brontide. Like, as soon as they're about to get hit, they'll just jump away and... Yeah, it's just bad. Alright, so that's about all for skills. Now we're going to Act 1. So, during Stage 1 of this game, you have two choices. You can either start a Mage... Well, you, you honestly, you have all the choices you want. If you want to start as a fighter and become a pawn and become a mage later, that's cool. But realistically, you have two good choices. You can start as a strider or as a mage. Now, the reason you might not want to start as a mage and start as a strider instead is because strider has way better stat growth for the first 10 levels. And then on top of that, your magic doesn't actually fall that far off from where mage magic is. Now, uh, if you do that, then you won't get a free Rusted Staff at the beginning of the game. So you're going to have to wait until you either find one in a weapon pile, like you just have to get lucky. Or you have to wait until stage 4 where you can buy Rusted Staff from Renard. So we'll go over that later. Speaking of Renard, when you're in stage 1, right now I'm in stage 2 so he's not here, but when you're in stage 1, you'll be able to buy the staff that I'm wearing, the Ironclad staff, from Reynard. And once you do that, go ahead and 2 start with 4 hunk of ores. Those drop from goblins. Next up, you want to go to the notice board here. You want to make sure you're doing this. Alright, so this quest right here, Evil Underfoot, is the one you want. It get, rewards you with an Annal Grace for defeating seven Phantasms. You're not going to do it immediately, but you're going to have time to do it. Matter of fact... Nah, I'm not going to take it. I already have the Annal Grace in my inventory. And the last thing you want to do... Alright, so normally when you get back to Castridus the first time, like, unless you like power speed through the game and you like are like, oh I want to immediately go to Grand Soren, you can, you can come back to Castridus after getting to the encampment. Let's see, is it Estella? Yeah, she sells a pickaxe. Go ahead and grab that all for her. And then you can go down into, uh, do I have a pickaxe on me right now? I don't. Let's grab one from her. We need to grab two silver ore to upgrade a weapon later. So we're just going to... Go down here, hopefully if we can find some. I'm not sure if we can, but we're going to see. Oh, maybe I should uh, affinity myself up real fast. Right? Uh, my time was off. Oh, by the way, that's a side effect of uh, Holy Affinity, is that you, uh, 
you heal yourself from time to time. Oh, look at that. And, like I said, it's just basically a death laser. You just release it. Even if you can't see the enemy, it's just instant death. Alright, looks like there's nothing else down there. At least not a, not a really available. I still hear it though. There's one down here. Alright, we got something over here. Let's see what we got going on. Rock, ill. Copper. Rock. Rock. We're going to see if we can find something in here. I'm not going to save scum this. Unless it really comes down to it. By the way, remember when I was talking earlier about um, Trigger? Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so ice is very effective against these guys. And then once they're frozen, physical damage does double damage to them. By the way, I never went over physical damage with a mage. You're... So your physical damage is actually pretty bad. Um, your best physical attack is either your jumping, like if you're using eminence, which I'm not right now. And that's how I don't let me heal myself real quick. So I am using a starter staff, which is why my attacks aren't killing in one hit. Just a heads up. But even with my starter staff, you saw that uh, Holy Affinity was basically a one-shot kill. And yeah, you're just going to run around Grand Sis, and you're going to look for silver ore. It's not that rare, so I'm not going to save scum for it. It's not like I'm trying to get priceless artifact. Oh, hold up. By the way, if you didn't know, this area is... Alright, so the one time where you want to use high commission is because it has a bigger AoE. By the way, I did not discover this. This is uh, Nihilo stuff. So go check out his YouTube short. If you just look up uh, Nihilo, if you just look up Nihilo Comestion, you'll be able to find the short that I'm talking about. Let's try here. Where are those? Am I tripping? No, okay, I'm not tripping. They are there. I, I just missed him. Plenty of snakes in. So, physical damage wise, you have this, and you have this. You have nothing else. N none of it is like that good by the way but you can get work done if you're like a very physical build you can get work done and be kind of like a quarterstaff monk and it's honestly the only way that you could solo a regular golem you wouldn't be able to solo um, well if you have all the patience in the world and all the health in the world you could uh, solo a, even a magic golem a metal golem but I I don't recommend it. And 
And I'm already holding... I'm already holding... As I'm casting on myself, I'm already holding the, uh, the button for a light attack so that I can get my holy focus boats off. And that's why you really, that's your bread and butter. You really don't need much else because of how overpowered, how overpowered that is. You don't even have to aim at the enemy, really. You can... It's instant death. And you can run to... Just do what you gotta do. It's just a great attack. High mobility. You can save it for later if you don't need it right now. Oh, by the way, speaking about pawns, do not ever, ever, ever in your life, like just like I said, don't upgrade anodyne, don't up upgrade commission. Do not upgrade or do not take at all a magic agent. So, uh, when we go to... When we go to Grand Star and I'll show you where it is. Don't, so that you can avoid it. <laughs> oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what regular boats look like, it's this. Yeah, you see how I'm no longer doing lasers of death? Now they're just sad lasers. Oh, you tried to go off on me. Alright, I think I should spell screen here for a little bit more. There you go. I just need a ounce of daylight. There we go. Oh, I'm in hard mode. I thought I was on hard mode, but I wasn't sure. Oh yeah, there's more big money bags. That's how you can tell if you're on hard mode or not, if you're getting random money bags where uh, you should be getting uh, rift crystals. So why'd I come here for this? All right, these should have silver if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna save some if I don't get it the first try. have to remember how many yep there we go that's one silver ore copper so silver copper gold for that one copper gold copper all right so I'm gonna get a silver out of one on the right hand side and then I'm gonna deplete this one on the left hand side twice and then re-roll Hopefully, that's, hopefully I get the one in there. Well, hopefully I can just deplete both twice and still get a silver for the effort. Alright, here we go. Gold. Please be silver. Okay, good. Oh, we got silver that time. So we got two silvers. Silver copper. All right, so that's our two silver ore, and with those two silver ore, we will be able to do some upgrading later of a very important weapon. So 
So now we're going to get our Eternal Fairy Stone. Now, normally you'd be uh, escorting an ox to uh, Grand Soren in order to uh, start Stage 2. But obviously I'm already in Stage 2, so I, that's not how I'm going to get here. I'm just going to warp. Take your business. Dang, he caught me that time. I always try to see how many times I can get past him without him seeing me. Alright, so, anyway. That's normally where you come through with the ox. Then Mercedes says, Welcome in the Grand Soren! And then this creepy dude somewhere over here, Mason, he says, Hey, come with me to a back alley. And, ho, ho, ho. and then uh, you go into this. You go into the inn. Get rid of all your crap that you don't need real fast. What will it be today? All right, so something you can withdraw while you're at the end is going to be the Eternal Fair Stone, which I just used, so it's already in my inventory, so I can't withdraw it again. But it's your main warp ability that allows you to fast travel between different locations that you set up with the port crystal. What will it be today? Um, what will it be today? Also, you're going to have the ability to wear two different sets now that you're here. You're going to have access to the set of Aldoan armor or the set of Queen's clothing. It just depends on whether you're a male or a female. Uh, the set of Aldoan armor is, well, the set of Queen's clothing is much stronger, period dot. Even at plus zero, it's far stronger than my set of Aldoan armor. But I am a male, so I'm going to be equipping the set of Aldoan armor here. What will it be today? What will it be today? Have your pick. All right. So what I was going over earlier, today? magic agent. So don't waste your own money on this, honestly, because there's no real reason for you to get this unless you're about to go into, like, Bitter Black Allen and you're afraid of mana, man eaters and you're going solo. Then I think uh, Dark Magic Agent might be able to bail you out. But otherwise, you don't need Magic Agent, and especially your pawns don't need it because they'll waste a ton of time during combat trying to cast this thing and it's trash what will it be? Have your pit come up. so you want to you want your pawn to have the less the least amount of unnecessary actions available as possible so that applies to your mage pawn and your sorcerer pawn you just don't want it where is madeline all right, so normally a young lady named Malin will be either in the inn or in this town square, and she will sell you two foreign knives that you can use to upgrade this set that we're wearing right here over here at Caxon. You will sell you. Now, we will take the ironclad staff and we will two star because we would have fought enough goblins on the way here to pick up four hunks of ore. Oh, look at these numbers. Look at my look at my money. That's funny. Uh, and then we would have also upgraded the set of Odon armor. It's actually dirt cheap to do. I think it's like two thousand gold. It only costs you to two uh, four knives to do it. All right, so what's next? So we need to go get favorite flower. So over here, and since this is a mage walkthrough, I'm going to be a lot more hands-on and showing you where I'm not just going to point to an area on the map I'm actually going to take you to to a lot of these locations oh really I didn't know that gate was closed and okay okay that's fine uh fast way there 
maybe through barter crags. No, that's dumb. I have one somewhere that will let me get there. Right here. <gasps> Normally this wouldn't be a problem. Because by the time you're going out there to grab favored flower, you should have done enough of the pawn guild quests in order to open up that back gate. I think you literally just have to talk to Barnaby in order to do it. Oh. Maybe I should do this. Maybe, maybe this will make good sense. <laughs> Alright, let's go. They're armed, master! <laughs> Sorry, there's no pawns here, so I have to add the pawn phrases myself. Oh, darn it. Didn't charge on the way. All right, I think that's all of them, for the most part. Yeah. Mages are really, really strong. <laughs> Mages, sorcerers are really, really strong, as long as you're not fight fighting the wrong enemy. I think it's just as simple as that. All right. So this is the catacombs exit, right? Um, store shed. So in here, in this box here in the storage shed, you're going to save scum this box. So you're going to open it until you get a favorite flower it's not that hard to do i think i i think it only takes me like five minutes every time i do it i'm not going to actually do it because i already have a favorite flower and then once you've got favorite flower by the way, favorite flower, just to show you know, uh, that's you've almost doubled your damage over Ironclad Staff here. And look at that stagger power difference. Massive. You're going to two-star it. The way to two-star it is you're going to go up here to the other side of the hills here. And you're just going to run along the road. Going more to the west. And you're looking for some glowing blue flowers. Get him. This is bad timing. I just ran out of holy affinity. Oh, almost missed one. Good thing I turned around. Where are they at? There he is. Alright, so we need three Jasper Blossoms. So here's one. There's two. Now we're looking for a third. And that's number three. That's all we needed. 
Take those Jasper Blossoms. Warp right back to Grand Soren with them. Alright. And then we take this favorite flower staff that we have with those three uh, Jasper Blossoms. Go to Caxon and we'd upgrade this... Uh, Favorite flower to two star using those. Yep. But since we're already two star, we don't need to do that. Matter of fact, I can show you a different. These the master works all. Three bl Jasper Blossoms and 4,500 gold. Alright. So now we've upgraded our staff finally. What's next? Well, we're going to upgrade our staff again, actually. So sometime during stage two, you're finally going to get the itch to try to take down those tough bandits, whether it's because uh, you're getting sent there from a troublesome tome or whatnot, or lost and found to try to go to the Witchwood and sign, uh, find Kina. There's a dude in town called Valmiro. He's also going to... You're, all, you're going to have to look for him. He's going to be down on the beach. You're going to need like six ring wear showing you in order to do this. But yeah. I think you need six green wearish and one Grancis herb. So that's his first location. Over by the encampment is his second location right in front of the door. And then his third location is going to be right inside of the proper entrance to the uh, Witchwood, which is the uh, very, very hard way to go. Where is the cliff? I feel like I'm too far along. Like, the cliff should have been back here somewhere. Like, it's not that far down. <laughs> oh, no. Or I'm just wrong. Sometimes I'll be wrong, guys. It's part of being human. That's it. Don't look like the cliff. Oh, it is a cliff. Wow. Let's see if we can make this jump. Oh, I just barely missed it. The only reason I recognize it was because it was on the... Uh, there we go, we made a jump. Only reason I recognize it was because it was on the mini map. Yeah. There's stuff in here, like usually a wooden wall. So we're going in the back. The back uh, way of the Witchwood. This is where you'd find, well, not where you'd find Kina. This is where you'd find, um, at least trap stem as well. No, they're doing wares. I could use those actually. And I guess my next question is, hmm, give me a second. I want to check this out. I want to check out this this node. Let's see what it drops here. Oh, I don't have the pickaxe.
Well. So, I haven't been speaking in a few videos and saying that the uh, the chest for Thunderclap is under the hut. This is not the chest for Thunderclap. This is chest for something else. Um, I forgot what it was though. Oh, Dire Wolf Bow, I think. The chest for Thunderclap is inside the hut. You can actually grab a bronze idol through the window. Yeah, the chest for Thunderclap is inside that hut. I can't open it right now, unfortunately. I'm learning so many things about things you can't access when you when you don't have the proper mission of it available. And there's also a pickaxe in there, so I'm not sure, but if you are able to, uh, let me try, let me try something. I don't think commission can break these, but I might just learn something. Matter of fact, give me a sec. Yep. It can be broke. I just got copper ore and a rock. Kind of trash. All right, but anyway, we're gonna get that thunderclap. Right now, it's not stronger than our favorite flower, but remember those two silver ore we got way back at the beginning of the game. Oh, wait, I can't upgrade over here. I haven't unlocked Baroque yet. This is really a version save. The only thing I did was get the Grand Soren. I'll use Barter Crags instead. Just because quicker than going to uh, Caxton. Oi, what? Come, come, don't be shy. So two thunder, uh, two silver ore will upgrade our thunderclap to plus two. Even though I have the Griffin Pinion, you would not have a Griffin Pinion yet. You won't. Your first opportunity to get one is in the first part of stage three. Come, don't be... Leave me. Come, come, don't... So rude. That's trash. Alright. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, uh, hopefully we've done Dying and Curiosity and uh, pass it correctly. <laughs> If we have, then we can go back to Cassius and we can harass Valmiro. By the way, now you can see the difference is 201 versus 181. So a good, a good increase of a uh, good increase in power. But what we really care about is the stack or knockdown power increasing. That will allow us to defeat the Griffin in stage three. Where does Valmiro live? I think he lives. Hmm. Good question. I'm not sure. See over here.
Maybe he lives in this one right here. All these people call each other cuz and can't tell me where freaking Valmira lives. Hello. I'd really not have to, like to not have to go through the night without figuring out where Valmira is. I should have done this earlier. I was thinking about starting off the stream while by bugging Valmira. What's this one? Oh, found him. Clutch. So, if hopefully this works out. I've never tried this, so I'm gonna try it now. Now I think long as Sunrise Spirit. Now I think. Long. So we're stored. Shows. All right. So I didn't get what I wanted that time. That's how I got Sunder Sunder Burgers Lord and Sundering Spear. Hopefully we get Winter's Pass this time. What? Why did he disappear? Where is he at? At least you found him again. Funny spear. Uh, is it just set that way? Darn. Alright, so I'm not going to get lucky. Let's try it one more go. Twice is okay data, but three times would be perfect data. And he's not just sitting up here, right? Good. Now I long as Sundering Spear and then Fogris Lord again. Yeah. We'll take him for now. Those are not what we needed, by the way. We needed uh, Winter's Path Tomes, but he didn't give them to us. So that's going to stop us, based on pure random number generation, that's going to stop us from getting a three-starred weapon later on in the game. We're gonna come back here to where that shed was. I and mean, we could have done this earlier, honestly. Uh actually we need a pickaxe before we do it. Let's go get a pickaxe first. Yes, I did. Good. 
We are. We can. It is a prayer. Oh, by the way, that was Madeline's voice, so she's here now. Yeah, the algae bloom that we have is not going to be able to get, to get the three stars because of that. Or, well, I guess we could use the Scrivener at the Black Cat to duplicate uh, the one that we're going to find ourselves. But these are what we needed from Valmira. A weapon that I'm going to withdraw now. You would have gotten this at the beginning of the game. You just need to make sure not to sell it. So hopefully you're not selling this weapon. Let me make sure I actually have it. Here we are. What will it be today? Your... Come actually, mine is gold forge. The rest of staff. Make sure you have that with you. And this is what we're trying to uh, upgrade now. Yeah, Even though mine is silver forged. What will it be today? So just act like it's base instead of silver forged. What will it be? Have your pit come again. By the way, here's Malin. Talk to her. Go to her tools all the way to the bottom. And you need two four knots in order to upgrade this armor set. Alright, so now we're on in the market for Sour Stone. Why? Because in order to 3 star Rusted Staff, you need 4 Sour Stones. And we can't get them now, we can get them near where we got the Favored Flower at. Let's just go. There's zombies all over the place now because it's nighttime. Want some free experience? Just turn around. Zombies hate holy, obviously, so. Also got uh, the followers of salvation. Looks like they have a little bit more magical defense than usual. Than the usual suspects that we deal with here. Regardless, they're all gonna die. Pew pew lasers. Pew pew everybody gonna die. Pew pew. Over here in that gate that we didn't go in before. Now can I actually reach this is the question. Oh, we got node one. Looks like we can get pretty deep in here, actually. I've only seen the one node. Oh, there's two nodes here. Alright, so there's two nodes across from each other. Only one of them actually has what we're looking for. Silver. Gold. What about this left hand side one? Copper. Copper. 
that gave me no information. I need to see either Fuglin ore or Sour Stone to know that, or Catacomb Gold to know which ore is which, which should know is which. Okay, so it's this right-hand side one that we're looking for. Because we saw Fuglin, we, we know that there's Sourstone here. Wherever you find Fuglin, you'll find Sourstone and vice versa. Unfortunately, we need to get lucky on our first try, so. Because there's only two shots per ore, we, don't, we need to get lucky on our first try. And remember, you wouldn't be doing it with God's being. You'd be doing it with uh, quitting out and getting back into the game. There we go. And then you could save it. And then resetting the game i'm doing god's bang just because it's faster but the real way is to go into your main menu and quit and then come back and then you'd be able to do it again and then you just have to do it four times until you get four star stones all right that was a good lucky star stone there and as you can see when you save it before actually depleting the mine you get extra strikes so I could keep hitting. I'm not going to do this four times, by the way. I just wanted to demonstrate what you'd have to do. Wait, why am I doing this? This makes no sense. Now... If you think that's too tedious, what you could do is, uh, honestly, this is just as tedious. <laughs> you could go to the Black Cat and uh, duplicate them. It'll cost you some more money, and then you'd have to rest a day in order to get it to reset. But in any case, I don't know if I have an extra staff. Hold up. Let me see if I do. I do. No, that's a wooden staff. Look for rest one. We do. And then you take four star stones and a good chunk of money to upgrade your rusted staff to plus four. And what that for plus three and what that does, as you can tell, the debilitation it gets is po uh, is torpor. And if you're able to torpor an enemy as a mage, you're doing well. Even though the magic is really weak, the torpor uh, debilitation is so strong. So we're going to swap to our rusted staff. <laughs> well, hello. We are. We can. It is our bread at your pick. Any you like. I don't think I have anything I need to swap out right now. So, in this case, now we're going to start Goblin Bane. So, Goblin Bane's going to cost you, and this only if you're in Arisen. If you're in Arisen, you go get Goblin Bane. If you're a pawn, then instead of going to get Goblin Bane, you'll go get Legion's Mind instead. So, Goblin Bane is a hate weapon. It hates goblins, so it does double damage or triple damage to them. Legion's Might is a gimmick weapon. Its gimmick is that if the person holding it is a pawn not you it has to be a pawn 
then they will revive after being knocked unconscious. That won't save them from anything that would instantaneously kill them, like um, the uh, brine or a death scythe or uh, a diamond rift. Anything like that won't save them. But if they're if they've just been knocked unconscious and they're like, "Help me," um, then they'll just get up on their own. It's really really weak, and you can't upgrade it past one star when you first get it. Uh, unless you're already in stage four, in which case you'll be able to get to one to two stars, and then uh, I think you have to be in post game to get three stars. But in any case, it's more of a uh, keeping your pawn a live weapon than it is an actual weapon. It's useless for offense, so that's why you, besides it not working on Arisen, even if it did work on Arisen, you probably wouldn't want to use it. Goblin Bane <clears throat> is good for a Fortress Proceeds, so right before you start that quest, I suggest you do you take it. But before we start Act, before we start Act Three properly, um, you'd want to go make sure that you've got your two star Thunderclap, and you want to equip the. Um, Bond, they have the they are best, best. Have your pick, any you like. What will it be today? Now you may not have these, just depending on where you're at with life. Um, so impact is somewhere on here. Oh, I already have impact. And then emphasis, definitely in those two. And then you'd also want to go to Fornival and buy uh, eight Demon's Perry apps. And once you have that set up ready to go, you'd uh, go out this gate here and you'd be confronted with a griffin. And you'd want to knock out that griffin so that you can get his drops and more importantly, keep griffin spawning in your game. Um, because if you don't beat him then and there, then no new griffins will spawn until you defeat the griffin from Act 4. So just go ahead and defeat this one right here right now. Gom Bane's uh in order to two star it you see it's got like a goblin skull on it, a shrunken goblin door skull. Door. In order to two star it you just go ahead and uh find ten goblin horns from regular goblins. And then if you've already beaten enough uh, hobgoblins, you could out just straight up ignore the two star and go straight to three star with slate collar horns. As for your pawn, Legion's Might. Again, you won't get Love and Rough until stage six, I think, actually, stage late stage five, stage six. And then Wake Stone, you're not going to get until post game. You're not going to be able to get that many. Uh, the most number of Wake Stones you can have in the main game before fighting the dragon is three. So to get ten, you wouldn't be able to do that even with forgery because the Wake Stone forgeries don't count. So yeah, this is towards right before you fight the dragon, and then this this is after you've beaten the dragon. That's why Legion's Might. And look at the the, the magic impact is not even that big so well, I mean it's big for the weapon but when you compare it to weapons that we already have at like stage 2 of the game nowhere even close alright so we're going to use goblin bane in order to beat up all the goblins in the uh, in the shadow fort because there's so many of them and that's about it uh, next weapon we're going to find over on Bloodwater Beach is going to be Divine Axis. It is a always holy weapon, so that's neat. 
but it doesn't give you lasers automatically, so that's lame. Um, but it's stronger than anything you've gotten so far, right? Compared to our Thunderclap, which was at 201, it's at 214. Wait, nope, not 214. It's at 229 unupgraded. And we can upgrade it. So you can go to Matias, uh, the un unfriendly <laughs> vendor over at Barter Crags, and you can just straight up buy a jewel of health off him and then upgrade your divine access to three stars. It's one of the easier the ones to do. And now you've got a very powerful three star weapon. It's not the strongest uh, staff you can get. There's still two stronger staffs, but it's a it's an easy one to get an upgrade. I'll show you how to get in a second. I'm gonna get rid of some stuff we don't need. So we've used Goblin Bane now because we've beaten the Shadow Fort, and we're doing Thunderclap because we've beaten the the Griffin and we've gotten Divine Access. So we can keep going from here, and we don't need Legion Smite. It's a gimmick weapon for pawns. So if you're using it on your pawn, it's cool. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's not that bad for early game because it's not that weak for early game. But once you get later in the game, you're going to want to replace it with something else. So, cool. What will it be today? Have your pick. Any you like. Come again soon. Now. Down on Bloodwater Beach. Feels like I go there for every single uh, location for some reason or another. But yeah, down on Vo Bloodwater Beach. I suggest you put your. Uh, I recommend putting your port crystal up here on that new flower cliff so that you can uh, easily have access to it. And you can also have access to the cave that's right by it. And your access to Bloodwater Beach is actually pretty good from here, too. So, from the fancy chest, so you have a level 1 chest, which is the box, level 2 chests are more round, and the level 3 chests are super fancy and ornate with like these angles on them. This level 3 chest is the one that has the chance to give you the uh, divine axis that I'm wearing right now. So, you can just save scum that. Oh, there you go, first try, divine axis. And then you can take that and go about your business. Oh, here's a level 2 chest, by the way, the round one. So, box, level 1, round, level 2, and then angled, ornate, level 3. And, of course, the drops inside of them usually correspond with the level of chest that you're getting. So, that's where you get this, uh, this staff from, for free. Now, we got one more staff that we want now. It's going to be called the Angled Grace. Um... In order to get it, we need to slay seven phantasms. So let's go ahead and warp back to Barter Crags. Now you can do this with Holy Affinity or you could do it with your Divine Axis. Either way, you're going to be doing the holy damage to them. But uh, it's just personal preference. Honestly, I want to try this out without uh, upgrading grabbing holy affinity let's try this out so we're just going to count off seven phantasms as we kill them now during nighttime this water is not toxic or poisonous to you so you can just go ahead and do what you gotta do one and since this is always holy damage two It still slows you down, but it's not poisonous to you. Four.
It's okay. If we run out of some up here, we can find more down there. Well, more inside of here. Just jump. So we had four, right? I'm I'm just gonna pretend I had three because I don't remember my count. Normally the quest would count for us. Five, I mean four. Five, six. And this is not holy focus boat. This is just regular focus boats, but this is a holy staff, so it just works this well. Oh, that's that's not good. That's. Yeah, he's a major, so if he hits me, it'll hurt like a mug. Like, he might be able to kill me. Can I? I need to focus. Two for one. I missed. Lucky. Oh, that's trash. All right, you know what? I I got something for you. Come here. I got something for you. Let me show you something new. Oh. Get smacked, silly. <laughs> Alright, so that would have been seven. And after killing seven of them, we would get... Annaled Grace. Now, Annaled Grace is a annaled weapon, obviously. It's an oily weapon. And what it does is it douses your enemies in oil so that the next time you hit them with a fire type damage, it deals double damage. Now this is kind of late to be getting an anode weapon because we're almost in stage uh, four by now, but it's still cool stuff. So let's go and demonstrate it after upgrading it. We need something kind of beefy to demonstrate with. Where's an easy boss to get to? Oi, what? Come, come, don't be shy. So the reason we take this one instead of the anode, um, it's not claw, it's something else. There's there's another weapon that you get in stage four is because uh, by the time you're able to three star it and get the blindness and the increased uh, chance of debilitation, you're already going to be in stage uh, six. So right now, in stage 3, you would be able to already have beaten a uh, Chimera and gotten a Freak's Claw. That's why we go with Anvil Grace here. Come, come, don't... Alright, let's go find an enemy to demonstrate on with Anvil Grace. Um, I think over here would work. All right.
Nighttime, nighttime is kind of scary sometimes, but we'll work it. I'm looking specifically for a uh, all right maybe I can't climb that maybe from this angle no no luck oh it's about morning time though all right so there should be a chimera somewhere I just want to demonstrate commission against an oiled enemy versus commission against a non-oiled enemy. All right, never mind. Looks like we're going to get ogres instead. Pretty okay damage, right? Not amazing damage. Gonna wait for him to stop being on fire. Now let's compare now. So you can't re-oil somebody until they stop being on fire. It looks like they're he's burning for longer this time. There you go. Put him too far away from this place. Oh, nope, it's just daytime. So those guys only appear at night, it looks like. I don't know if I'm going to have time to, uh, He did not like that. Alright, I want to get a good animal to weapon hit on these guys. Oh, he's oiled?
Yeah. That first surge of fire does double damage. Now, it may not be as apparent with this weapon, but let me swap to a different weapon and do the same thing. So he's oiled, good. Let's swap to divine axis, which we would have. Are you serious? Didn't think he could jump up here. case the best thing you can do against I think a regular chimera is holy right it's just for like if you want to play around with different effects Alright, so unfortunately the goat does <laughs> resist the crap out of magic. So you might have to get active. So when I start talking about being a quarter staff monk here, in order to get it done quickly. Now, normally you'd have like a fighter or something helping you, maybe a archer of some type. Sleep. Don't accidentally get hit by that. Stay here. There you go. You just beat him to death. For these really small guys, you don't really have to charge up. You can just let it go. It's actually more effective that way because your uh, charged bolts will only hit one enemy at a time. Usually they only home in on one enemy. But yeah. You can get an Anode Grace it's just to experiment with that effect, but I don't think they tuned it high enough. They should have tuned it to that does like five, five times fire damage and it would have been more worthwhile. All right, so that'll be the end of stage three. Let's go do stage four. So stage four is what happens after you've um, met the Duke. One of the biggest changes you'll notice is that our buddy Caxton now has some uh, uh, idol that he wants. So hopefully during stage two, you went and got the real gold idol and just straight up give it to him. If you did, then you'll get the Algid Bloom here. After three days of resting, you'll be able to buy that off him. And then you can give uh, Madeline the Silver Idol that you'll get from a notice board in Castridus called Put Out the Eye. You'll have to go beat up an enemy. And again, after raiding for three days, you'll be able to buy barb nails off of her. Barb nails increase your knockdown output. Now, her uh, inventory restocks every seven days, so you can just go back to her every seven days and get more 
of those um won't need this either get more of those um barb nails what will it be at your stomach So, let's pretend another seven days has passed. We just went back and got another set in order to max out our knockdown power. Now, remember in the back in stage two or three, I was trying to get stuff from uh, Valmero. It was stage two. Now, if he gave me three of these tomes, then I would have been able to get a fourth one from the Dragonforge lair. But since he did not, then I cannot. Now I cannot. The most I can upgrade this is to plus two without uh, without his help. So this is the more consistent what you'd be able to do. But it is possible to get to plus three. Now the only other way it would be um, if you uh, forge those uh, tomes then you can get enough of them. And then uh, we're also going to 3 star of Aldoran armor. You're going to need to beat up uh, 2 skeleton lords in order to do that. It's going to be nighttime for the rest of the stream, or daytime for the rest of the stream, so I'm not going to be able to demo. But you're just going to use Holy Focus Bow, honestly. They're weak to Holy, they're undeads. Just use it. Now, you're also notice that people are in, are in the town square and they're talking about going and hunting down our good friend Celine. Go and accomplish that quest where you save her and you will get. The favorite canopy. That is the, I would say, is that the actual strongest staff that you can get because it isn't uh, an elemental staff, and that's why I prefer it over Algid Bloom. And also, it's much more um, easier to upgrade to three stars. The master works all. You can't come again. So let's do a direct comparison between two star Algid Bloom and three star Favorite Canopy. They're actually pretty close. 244. Now, if I did three star Algid Bloom, it would have a higher magic output. But it's so much easier to find a black crystal by just killing a white with your holy focus bolt than it is to find four Winter's Path homes and then, um, unless Valmiro gives you three of them. If Valmiro gives you three of them, then that's easier to do. But the reason I say, even three star versus three star, favorite canopy is the better weapon, is because Dire Wolves, Snow Harpies, Griffins, so your white enemies, they all resist ice. Every single version of undead or skeleton resists ice. And there's a ton of them in the late game. Um, most of your bosses that I can think of, Cyclopses resist ice 50%. Um, basically, if it's not a Drake or a, or a Saurian, you you probably want to be using you probably don't want to be using ice against it so that's why when even though the uh, even though Algit Bloom technically has a higher power the fact that you're going to get reduced damage from it is why I go with favorite canopy and I'm just talking about the uh, regular f uh, focus boats because sometimes you're just going to, you're not going to want to enchant yourself. You're just going to want to shoot something. And when you're trying to do that, favorite canopy is clearly superior. Now, which has the higher strength rating? Oh, favorite canopy by an, an 
and it's not even close. Um, you can also get the Gloves of Might if you so choose. However, I they're not really necessary for you because you can't really do decent decent climbing damage. Well, that's not completely true, but you normally just want to stay on the ground. All right. <clears throat> And that would be everything you need from stage four. Stage four is actually pretty simple for mage. Now, stage six. We need to go find our buddy Jace. Actually, we're not going to go all the way, Jace, because it'll take forever to get to him. But I will just explain what we want from him. So, <clears throat> you are able to purchase most of your in-game set from him. Notice we've been wearing the Voldoan armor this entire time. Now we're actually going to wear something different. So we're going to put on this Twilight Hood. Uh, the sage's robe the hunter's shirt and uh, the leather bandings all those are available from Jace who is right over here in the rest camp right near Devil Fire Grove and while we're at it, we might as well upgrade everything. So, I feel like I forgot the Conqueror's Mantle. I think Conqueror's Mantle is that black hat. Yeah, you can go grab a Conqueror's Mantle from Black Hat as well. So go ahead and put that on as well. Oi! Come, come, don't be sure. Alright, so Twilight Hood, three dark peridots. You get those from Skeleton Knights. You can find those at Blue Moon. The hunter's shirt would require you to uh, find eight direwolf pelts, not the hard thing to do. The uh, leather bandings will require two snakeskin. I got like five at the beginning of the game, so you should have seen that. It's right down there in um, Drip, Drip Water Cave. I don't have enough uh, pigeon's blood, but you can get them at night time like from skeleton mages right here in uh don't be sure. Barter Crags, just west of uh, west of here. West of uh, uh you know, rooms I haven't speak. There's a ton of them that spawn here. It's just kinda hard to see them on the ground when they drop. Next up, speaking of Ruinous Heaven Speak, we're going to go to the top of uh, the tower there. And we're going to find a purple long kilt. It is a very rare drop, like a 2% drop, but we want it, so we're going to get it. I was going to upgrade that. And that's gonna. I don't think you can get the center stones yet, so you'd have to get uh, the iridescent talisman. The iridescent talisman is at a fancy chest behind the miasmic hunt camp. So everything you need is in this actual general area. The miasmic hunts down here, and the camps down here at the bottom. 
and this is going to be the fanciest level three chess. And then uh, you're also going to get the golden claw from uh, Wilhelm's quest. He's going to want you to take him to Northern uh, Healing Spring. Just do it. Actually, uh, what you could do to make it even easier is just set a Fairy Stone down there temporarily. This is Wilhelm on the ground. Hopefully you saved him in Act 2 of the game with a Wake Stone that you would have gotten from the Everfall here. And then you just revive him and then give him some large fish if he asks for them. This is during stage six, so you should be able to do it. And yeah, he rewards you with the Golden Claw for taking him all the way up to the Blighted Mance Healing Spring. And then the last item that we haven't gotten are the Alchemical Bangles. There's a chest at the top of uh, the castle during the nice salvation. It's in a room where you're going to fight a lone skeleton lord. It's like a really fancy, powerful skeleton. And you have to make sure that the guy who's there doesn't die. If you do that, then... Um, You'll get the alchemical bangles. Well, you'll get access to a fancy chest that has a chance to give you the alchemical bangles. Let me say it that way. There we go. All right. And now that's the last thing you actually need in the game and with that you have your full set you can uh try stuff out Let's see What it all looks like. I don't know what the screen cap's going to be, but this looks pretty cool. Alright, so as always, I like to end with a little bit of gameplay. By the way, you're going to uh, Dragon Forge the uh, Golden Claw here. It's because it's the hardest thing to dragon forge and it's the most useful immediately afterwards you're going to be able to take down a couple of enemies that are able to be silenced but this is a very hard boss battle that we're about to get into so we're going to see how how we hold up so as you can see our magic our physical defenses went down when we swapped to this set, but our magic defenses went up. So if you still want some extra physical defense, you can keep on your um, your set of Aldoan armor. Alright. So normally mages don't like fighting golems. Because golems don't take magic damage. Especially. The main deal is you don't. The most important thing you need to do is make sure that you're aiming 
But all right, so you can just walk slowly and avoid these. As you can tell, I'm just, I'm mainly just aiming. I should be doing this with a Conqueror's Parry app. I don't know why I didn't think about that. And slow and steady wins the race, kind of. Let me just kind of walk. Cool guys don't look at explosions, right? There we go, there's one. And every time you break one, just look around on the ground. See if he dropped a uh a magic metal or something. Looks like that's a no this time. So there's one on the bottom of his foot here that I'm trying to get to. There's no easy way to do it. Let's see if I can. Trying to just encourage him to get down. There you go. You need to just get a little bit closer there. There you go. That's another hard to get one that we took care of. And then. Looks like that actually does damage to him a little bit. Or at least the stagger does. Now, if you break this glowing disc, uh, it's problems, so don't. We'll leave that one for the end. That's bad. I'm getting tossed around and I'm not able to stay on him. A little bit of damage there, it's fine. I really want to leave the easy to get ones for the end. Oh 
I'm hoping I can just make him fall over, even though I can't. Even though I can't do damage this way, I want to just make him fall over. I'm so confused by what he's doing. Oh, that's lame. Maybe lasers will help. So no nothing I'm doing can do him damage. I just want him to fall over again. This is the struggle of being a mage. Yeah. So I got to knock him over once, and after that, I can't knock him over again. That's unfortunate. angles I highly underestimated how hard it would be to hit the this up above his head I don't even think I can deal damage to them. Oh. Is this my only chance? Dang. Oh. Need you to... Darn, he's getting back up. I totally flopped. Uh, I totally screwed that up. Maybe I should have used uh, the back disc there. Yeah, I should have used the back disc there. Oh. 
I literally can't reach that disc. I wish his own lasers could hurt him a little bit. Like. Can you, can you, can you aim with your left arm, bro? Left. Not right, left. Left. I got three discs left. Well, four. I don't even think I can hit this one reliably. Oh, wow. I almost walked right into it. There we go. No! I need to make sure I jump for those. Such a quick attack. Oh, that's right. I have Sanctuary. I can't take physical damage. That's right. Oh. We find ourselves at an impasse. He can't kill me and I can't kill him. Listen to me. I need you to pretend. can hit him. I'm just not thinking. Okay. Okay. New game. I know how to hit him now. I gotta jump off of him, but... chest because it's free. Trying to aim. There we go. Got a hit. Jump. That could have been worse. By the way, the sanctuary augment that I'm using came from Mystic Knight. I'm 
I'm going to break this disc because now it's actually going to be a benefit because it'll freeze him and then uh, let me knock out, knock out his head pretty quickly as long as it's not protected. There you go, fall. 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 And this is why I wanted to make sure that all the hard to reach ones were done first. So that the ones that are in open areas are just. I can just swing and hit him. I might be running out of time here. Got him. <sighs> oh, all right. That was rough. Dapple doors. And yeah, that is how you do something that is incredibly tedious and annoying. So that'll be it for this uh, episode. As always, I've been me. You've been awesome. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Love you guys.